We're here, folks. Finally, after eight months, 21 or 22 episodes, tons of voting, tons of comics feuded, the final episode. Four movies go into the ring. Iron Man, Captain America Civil War, Spider-Man 2, and a final movie that I can't remember, The Dark Knight. How do I forget? Because this isn't scripted. That's right as a bonus, and we've done some fun things during the comic book bracket. Keep in mind, we've done some fun things. I've fought future and past versions of myself. We brought back the rose-colored glasses feature. We brought back the pun counter. I traveled back to the past so I didn't have to reshoot an episode and feud the Fantastic Four movies again because they suck. And what are we doing for the final? We're doing a live, off-the-cuff episode, unedited, of movie feuds. I hope to hell this works out. Let's roll the intro on the TV because we're not cutting away from me, baby. I'm way off on my time. I'm gonna say the round is starting now. I hope that syncs up with the TV. If it doesn't, I don't care. This is, this is live, this is real time. So the cast. Where do we begin? Spider-Man 2 has Tobes. My Toby Maguire, my, my beautiful, precious Toby. Uh, R.I.P. We'll never see you as Spider-Man again, unfortunately. He's, he's the superior one in my book. We'll see how Holland does, but uh, Garfield can just go away. I, I, like, the, I like the kid, but, but come on, Toby. He's the real deal. Uh, who else do we have in this? J. Jonah Jameson played perfectly by the actor that also has a name, an initial, and another last name, and I forgot it, so I'm just gonna move on. We have uh, the redhead. See what happens when I go off the cuff? I don't have the names that I have to look down in the script. Kirsten Dunst. She's whiny, yeah. She gets in trouble a lot, yes. But I still liked her. I still liked her a lot. She was uh, easy on the eyes. She's a very good actress, believe it or not, even though these, uh, the Spider-Man Sam Raimi films are kind of cheesy, tongue-in-cheek, but it's intentional. And she really works, and it's believable chemistry. I, th I thought that the Garfield movie um, with Emma Stone, Emma Stone is a national treasure, don't get me wrong, but their relationship just didn't feel real to me. It felt real with the Raimi films. Let's move on to The Dark Knight. We'll go back to villains at the end, that's what I usually do. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to take a beat. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm just racing through this, and this is the final, final comic book movie bracket episode. Dark Knight. I mean, the, the, the superior standout is uh, Heath Ledger, of course, as the Joker. Uh, you know, there, there's going to be the people, the haters, or the people that are like, He's overrated. He died. That's why he's a big deal. Uh, I beg to differ. Go back and watch The Dark Knight right now. His performance is incredible. It is up there amongst the best top-tier villains of all time. I can't, I can't even put more than four or five in front of him, if even that. I mean, Hans Gruber always jumps out right away to me. Dr. Evil from Austin Powers is a favorite of mine, because he's just... You know, characters that stand out. No, he wasn't really the traditional joker of what you think, loony off the wall, but he made it his own, and it really worked. Uh, Batman, Christian Bale, has never been my favorite. That's always going to be the thing that makes me look back on The Dark Knight and go, everything is so good except for Christian Bale. I just can't get past his ridiculous voice. Lucius, where is she? Where's Rachel? and his mouth's always open because he couldn't breathe uh, through the nose holes. And they ever get a Batman suit right? Michael Keaton couldn't turn his neck, so he had to go like this? I don't know. Uh, and don't even get me started on Affleck's bat suit. It's ridiculous. It's just absurd. And my voice cracked a little bit. I'm not going to get water now. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to press through this. Two-Face by uh, Eckhart. Alan Eckhart, is that right? Something. That, that, that guy's weird, because he's a good actor, but he's also in a lot of B-movies, so I, I don't really know where to place him. In this, he does really well. It, it's a shame that, and, and I always go back to this as a hang-up, too, for The Dark Knight. It, it, it's, it builds the character so well, from Harvey Dent to Two-Face. It's such a shame to see that character arc just get wasted in the final act. He just turned into Two-Face. 
give him another film, you know, bring him into the third one in Dark Knight Rises. I just thought that was a wasted opportunity for a brilliant performance and a great character. Uh, my brushing blide, blide. <laughs> See, unscripted. My, my brushing, my blushing bride, Katie Holmes. Nowhere to be found in the sequel. Did they ever really say what happened there either? Some people said it was a conflict of interest for Katie. She had other things going on. Some people say that she wasn't asked back. Nolan didn't like her. Regardless, it always, it always is jarring when you change characters um, mid-trilogy. I didn't like when they did that with uh, Rhodes' character in Iron Man 2 in the, the sequels, although I love Don Cheadle. It's still weird. You get that, you get that uh, mix of characters, and I, it just doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel good in my tummy. What else? Uh, you, you know, Dark Knight's got a superior cast. They got so many good actors. Um, Morgan Freeman, uh, the English guy who's in every Christopher Nolan film. I'm on the spot, so I can't think of his name. Maybe it'll come back to me. He's the butler. He's Alfred. Michael Caine. God damn it. Michael Caine. We're moving on. What's next? Iron Man. We have Robert Downey Jr., who basically brought comics uh, out of the ashes and into the real-time blockbuster spectacles that make billions of dollars. I credit X-Men for really doing it well and really giving them uh, the prestige there. And then Spider-Man, of course, came and really blew things up. People will go back and say Blade started it. L let's not do that, okay? Blade was a great movie. Wesley Snipes was awesome. But that, that didn't tell people, this is a comic book movie. Let's get really excited about comic book movies. No, it didn't tell studios that either. X-Men and mainly Spider-Man, I think, was the real wake-up call. But Robert Downey not only continued that trend, but he made it so that Marvel was just a giant monopoly in the industry, basically. If it's a Marvel movie, it's going to make a lot of money, and people are going to see it, and that's mainly because of Robert Downey's performance as Iron Man. Then you have Pepper Potts. Eh, I don't care. I never, Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow's okay. She's, she's not my favorite. Um, like I said, you have uh, Rhodes. Is it Rhodes? Uh, War Machine. Iron Patriot. Rhodey? Rowdy? I can't remember the, the initial actor's name, but he couldn't come back because he asked for the same amount of money as Robert Downey. I believe that's what the, the articles have said to me, so I believe that because I believe everything I read on the internet. Who else is in this? I'm going to take another drink of water. <coughs> Find a little bit of a cold, too. I'm just, I'm just talking fast and loose. No editing, unscripted. This is real time. This is what people have asked for in the past. Like, just talk off the cuff, Adam. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, well, I don't do uh, jump cuts. That's not my thing. I won't do it. I refuse. So if things go wrong, they're just going to be put in. I'm not cutting away either, because I want, I want you to know that this is real time. There's no cuts. Although, side note, my camera, it, it, it's digital recording, of course. So after every 30 minutes, there is a slight little hiccup when it switches over to the next 30. I don't know what it's doing. It only captures 30 at a time, then it does something magically internally. But all I know is when I edit, I will see that frame shift, and it'll just be like, like a little jump. So you might see that little jump somewhere in here, and you're going to go, oh, he edited that. No, I didn't, Cameron. That's just what happened to the digital footage, because this camera's not very nice, Cameron. Anyway, back to Iron Man. The villain comes in in the third act. I'm not a big fan of that whole. The third act of Iron Man is where things kind of go a little too cliched superhero. I thought the first two really built, but that's for story. We'll get there. I don't have anybody else I want to talk about Iron Man. Let's go with, um, <clears throat> what's the final movie? Oh, Civil War. Jesus Christ. We're, this is already running long. What are we? We're at 11 minutes? <clears throat> Jesus, fuck. No, it can't be that long. <clears throat> I'm fighting a cold. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't even want to do this. Uh, there's too many people to name off. You have Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson. I can't even, there's just too many. I, I, I'm going to stop there. Robert Downey, uh, the, the Chris Hemsworth. No, Hemsworth's not in that one. Thor's not there. Captain America, Chris Evans. There's too many Chris's in the Marvel industry. Uh, 
Don Cheadle, fuck, there's just too many, okay? We have Ant-Man in there, we have uh, Black Panthers in the mix now, Spider-Man cameo. It, there's just so many favorites up on the screen, clashing swords, clashing shields. Nobody has a sword, but someone should. It, it's, it's quite a sight to see. My, one of my other brides, uh, Black Widow, uh, she's in full form there. She's in full dick-throbbing mode with her short skirt and her magic and her tricks. I like all of it. I like everything she, that she's doing. Uh, Vision's there. I, I don't have anything else to say. Let's move to uh, round two story. That goes up on the TV next to me. Mm. Back, back cracked. You probably can't hear that, but it, it felt pretty good. Story, um, where do we begin? The Civil War, or Civil War, I've joked many times how it should, be a, it should have been called a civil dispute or a small hang-up, little misunderstanding, because it's just not the scale of a war. When you have a war in the title, you expect something huge, not a fight at the airport. That's, that's what it is. It's the Muslim ban. It's a fight at the airport. And it needed to go bigger than that. It needed to go global for a war. Um, but but it, was a, it was a good premise. I, I, I believed it, I guess. I believed the misunderstanding. I just wish it wasn't called Civil War. I get that they're playing off the comics and whatnot, but I, I expected like a, a two-movie featurette. Somehow it goes into space, or shit's blowing up in another country, and you know there's guys fighting over there, there's guys fighting over here, and everything's just coming to a head. And, and there's just hundreds of superheroes that are in the mix. But we did get Black Panther, he was well introduced. I like that the villain was downplayed, and he was a more of a puppet master who got Stark and uh, Captain America fighting against each other. Bucky was fun to see back as a Winter Soldier. There's, there's a lot happening. It's, it's, it's a big film, yet it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> you know? It's two and a half hours. There's a lot going on, but it's all still kind of very contained. Um, I really liked Captain America in this one. I loved how he went rogue, and he's doing his own thing. And when the film ends, you still get this kind of sour note, a sour taste, because him and, him and Tony Stark get each other, but they're not on the same page. And I'll, I'm excited to see where that, where that goes from here. <clears throat> I still think they should have killed War Machine. That was a... There's just no stakes. And that's, that's the big problem with Civil War. And uh, that's where the Dark Knight really shines, because there are stakes. And, I mean, they, they fucking kill key characters, you know? Rachel dies, which, once again... <laughs> like, I knew Katie Holmes from the first one, seen her die in this one. I was still getting adjusted to the character switch. But I, I was also... It was, it was ballsy of them to do it. I did not expect them to do it. Usually Batman can figure out a way to save both people, save the day, and make everybody happy, but not here. It was, it was grounded, it was gritty, it was real. And uh, it, was, it was just a treat. It's a little long, a little long for me. Um, Christopher Nolan's movies are, though. It's, I, I guess it's very hard for him to make a movie under two, and, two hours and some change. You know, I'd like to see a nice hour, 45-minute film from him. But that's just a hang-up I have with the director. He's still brilliant. What else? Um, Iron Man. <clears throat> it started it all for Marvel. I, I liked that it was... Very, very uh, smart, and uh, it was different. You know, he goes to the caves, he has to build his suit. It, it's not really, and, and I like that he introduced to everybody in the world. He's like, I'm Iron Man, fuck you, I'm not keeping this a secret. This is who I am. You know, you, you see so many of these superhero movies where they're, they're keeping quiet. They tell one person, and by the third movie, maybe three people know. And all, I can't relate to that at all. All I'm thinking is, if I can fly or if I can punch someone through six buildings, I'm going to tell everybody I know. <laughs> so I guess that's why I'm not a superhero. That's not why I don't have uh, that power. Because you have to have you know, responsibility when you get that great power. Spider-Man taught me that. And Spider-Man, I guess that's a segue, because I love the story of Spider-Man um, in Spider-Man 1, but we're debating Spider-Man 2, which isn't as good if you ask me, but you didn't. You voted for Spider-Man 2, so we're going there. Spider-Man 2, still considered one of the best superhero movies of all time. That's why it's on this list, and for good reason. You have Dr. Octopus, 
who also, awesome villain, up there in the top 10 for me, maybe top 20, maybe I'm being generous because I'm, on, I'm in real time, I'm spinning a bunch of bullshit out of my ass. He is great though, and I like that him and uh, Peter Parker are friends, they have a connection, they're both brilliant minds. And I like how at the end there isn't even a big battle. It's more of a realization, the chip gets fried, he's there, a weathered man, disheveled, lost everything. Everything is literally collapsing around him, physically and mentally up here. So he takes one for the team. He ends it. Um, and, and it has one of the best acting moments in any superhero movie, and that's from Kirsten Dunst. The moment she realizes that Spider-Man is Peter fucking Parker, the look in her eyes, the face that she gives is brilliant acting. Go back and watch it if you don't believe me. It blows so many other moments out of the, out, uh, just out of the water. It's, it's fantastic. Um, I'm going to move on to action and effects. I feel like this is just going just ridiculously long. Yep, 18 minutes. Wow. 18 minutes. I don't know. Actually, it's, it's less than that. It's probably more like 14 minutes because I did record and test my audio and do a bunch of stuff. So this, this, it's probably more like 14 right now. Either way, it's getting very long. Uh, not action and effects. We, it's action and, or effects and music. Bring that up on the TV. Effects and music. I'm going to take another drink of water. <clears throat> That's just disgusting. It's just a lot of phlegm, a lot of, a lot of bad stuff in my system right now. I'm going to get done with this and find out my audio, in fact, didn't work, and this whole thing is for nothing. <clears throat> Effects and music. This is going to be a quick one, because I don't remember the composer's names on a lot of these movies. I know that Danny Elfman did uh, Spider-Man. It's still probably top five uh, best comic book superhero movie score ever. Batman uh, from back in the day, the, the Michael Keaton films, amazing. But the, the Danny Elfman score is, fuck, that's just a treat. The, the opera so the music, ha, ah, ah, ha, he's flying around the city. He's very patriotic. We get some nickel back in there at some point just to make that score even cooler. Maybe that wasn't a good example. Chad Kroger is a Canadian treasure, though. Let's not, let's not move past that. Let's not ignore that. Hans Zimmer, Dark Knight, a lot of booming, thunderous, low noises that rise up to peaks. I, I criticize Marvel films a lot for the music because I look at movies like Spider-Man and pretty much every Batman movie score, which is always amazing, and I think, do that, Marvel. Why aren't you doing that? And Marvel does have good songs, good music, but they're not great. They may be great later when you listen to them uh, you know, at your desk or in the car or whatever you, you kids do, but when you're masturbating, but they don't sound great in the movie. Uh, when, when I watch Spider-Man, I'm just instantly, my ears are just loving the taste of that sound as he's swinging around kicking ass. But in Marvel, everything's so drowned out. The music's so drowned out because there's so much happening in the foreground. You don't get to really appreciate it. I look back at movies like Jurassic Park, Jaws, Star Wars, those music help tell the story. And I just don't see that in Marvel, which is uh, would also missing in Iron Man and even Civil War. Iron Man does have ACDC, so that helps a lot. What else? I'm like kind of bringing up a burp <clears throat> or clearing my throat. I don't know. Is, why, why did I do it this way? Is it lazier to unscript it? Absolutely. Well, I guess I answered my own question. I thought it would be fun too, but... <laughs> Here we are. As far as effects go, Spider-Man has a very comic-y feel. I think it works extremely well. Um, the first one, or the second one, maybe less corny campy than the first, um, but it still has definitely has its moments. I like even the horror aspect of it that Raimi throws in, where the machines are killing people in the hospital. It's very dark. Um, let, I mean, can we talk about the, the biggest moment in probably any superhero film, which is Spider-Man kicking the shit out of Dr. Octopus, exchanging blows on the subway station as it's flying down the city. My favorite is when he jumps off of it, he shoots a web and he's skateboarding for a second on the ground, goes back up. 
There's moments like that sprinkled throughout, but that moment, that three or four minute action segment is phenomenal. And then it ends with him pulling out the windows of the buildings as he's stopping the train, and everybody lifts him up, hoists him in the air, their hero, and just gives him his mask and lets him go on. They get it. City's behind him. So am I. Um, Team Toby, all the day. All the day. <laughs> all the day. Damn it, Adam. Stupid. <clears throat> Dark Knight's practical effects. It's a practical movie. I mean, as practical as you get when a man dresses up as a bat and fights crime. They flip semis over in real life. For real, for realsies. He drives that awesome motorcycle thing, the bat pod. I mean, I, I, this is running long. Can I just be done? We know these movies, okay? We know them. I've already talked about them. Why are you making me redo this again? You're just gonna vote anyways. Half of you aren't even gonna watch this. Why would you? You know what you you know what you like. I don't need to tell you what you like. Sorry for getting upset. I mean, I have two things left. Civil War. Let's be honest. The air the airport scene is the movie. There's other moments, you know, when, when Tony Stark fights a uh, fuckhead at the end, when they go shield to blasters. What, why am I forgetting Captain America's real name? What the hell is it? Stevens? Even Stevens? Stewie? I don't know. It's St it's Stevens, I think, or something with the S. Samson, Swanson, Slappy, Samsonite. But that airport scene, though, it's like seven or eight minutes long. Maybe it's longer. I don't, I don't know. It goes on for a long time, and it is, oh, man. Ah. Love it. Love everything about it. I'm excited for the next Marvel films when they fight in space for, with, with the Guardians of the Galaxy and the Infinity Wars or whatever the hell that's going to be called. Infinity Wars. Infinity Dispute. It's going to take place in a schoolyard with all these people, and it's going to be over in 20 minutes. The fight will. That'll be Infinity Wars, part one and two, if it's even still a part one and two. I'm rambling now. Last movie, Iron Man. Not, not the greatest in action. There's some cool parts, like when he shoots the, you know, the tank and he walks away and it's all badass. The final fight, though, I'm not a fan of it. That's where the movie loses me. The, uh, the bad guy has this giant rocket ship suit that he just constructs overnight and he knows how to fly and control better than Downey? To then Stark? No. 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 Believability lost. Let's conclude. Conclusion comes up. You know, I'm going like this, but I actually think because it's mirrored, the TV, when I go like this, the TV is going to be on the right side. So I'm actually, I've been pointing to the wrong, the wrong way the whole time. My God. This is a fucking disaster. In conclusion, if I had to pick a winner myself, which I do by law, as my channel is my show, I have to put my money where my mouth is. <sighs> that is really tough. Um, I'm not going to say Iron Man, that's out. I'm not going to say Civil War either. It, it's, it's fun, it's fine. I wasn't blown away like a lot of others were. I think it's a, it's a nice film. It's, it really comes down to Spider-Man 2 and The Dark Knight for me at the end of the day. Spider-Man 2 is a better superhero movie, I think. It just, it's just more superhero-y. You know, Batman is a brilliant crime drama action movie that happens to have Batman in it. I think the movie could have got away with just being a normal film with a crazy guy that was like the Joker. But it's, uh, man, never thought it would be so hard to, to, to pick a fucking winner. I, I got to go Dark Knight. I just have to. I, I like Spider-Man 2 a lot. It, it, is, it definitely deserves to be up here. Uh, real talk, if I had my way, it would have been X2 up on this board or Days of Future Past. You can laugh all you want, but I'm an X-Men fan. And I think X2 and Days of Future Past are, are brilliant comic book movies. I, I think I'd take X2 over Days of Future Past, honestly, because 
I just can't stand Mystique in ScarJo form. Not ScarJo. Not ScarJo, I'm sorry, I apologize. Scarlett Johansson, not you. The other, the other abbreviated actress. She's just so down to earth and edgy and I don't need to listen to no man. The hell's her name? Jennifer Lawrence, J-Law. I got there. How many mistakes did I make this episode? Someone keep count, please, and then let me know in the comments if you're still here and watching. All right, I've given you my piece. Dark Knight's my winner. Now I want to hear from you. Comment, vote, subscribe for your favorite comic book movie of all time, and I'll tally them up, baby, and I'll let you know the results in a week or so, maybe two weeks. We'll see how I'm feeling. All right. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me. And remember, this is more than just reviews. This is Movie Feuds. Wow. <sighs> oh my God, 27 minutes? Maybe it's only 20 when it's all said and done. Jesus. <laughs>